Hey there, YouTube friends, and welcome back to The Millionaire House. If you're new here, my name is Melanie, and in today's video, I'm going to share how we achieve this really easy weekend DIY. In fact, you can probably do it in a day once you have all of your materials. But first, if you walk away from this video with at least one new idea, or if you learn one new thing, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. This is the second video in my Extreme Master Bedroom Makeover series. In the first video, we talked about how to choose the right paint color for your home. And today we are talking about this very achievable DIY board and batten wall. I did it in one day after I got all of my materials and it cost a little under $70 to complete. In the past for accent walls, I will usually try some sort of stencil, but I wanted to step it up a little bit because it is our master bedroom and do something a little more sophisticated. So I decided to go this route and it really all started one morning. I was going through Pinterest having a cup of coffee and this is what I came up with. In fact, you can see the coffee stain on my original design while I sat there. You can actually see a little sneak peek of some of the furniture we're planning for the bedroom as well. My daughter, I was an English major, you do the math, so <laughs> she scaled it out for me on graph paper and that was really the first step. After I looked around, it didn't seem like there was really any right or wrong way to do these. I think it's a matter of your preference. My wall is very wide, as you can see here, so I didn't want it to look too busy, so I opted for three boxes in each horizontal row. There was a little math involved. I'll have the specific details on how I figured everything out listed over on my blog at themillionairehouse.com. My original idea was to purchase big MDF boards and have them cut down to my design size, which was one by four by eight. But when we got to our local home improvement store, they told us that we couldn't cut down the boards, that they would shred into a million pieces. So we went over to the pre-cut primed MDF boards and there were two problems. One, the boards were over $9 a piece and I needed at least 13. And two, they weren't actually four inches. They were more like three and three quarter inches wide. So after I pitched a little bit of a fit, they agreed to cut down the MDF board and guess what? It didn't shred to pieces. <laughs> so I just wanted to put that on your radar. They can cut those boards down. Mine came out perfectly fine. And then my design wasn't all thrown off by the boards that were a little bit too short. And I'll make sure to list all the supplies that we used over on the blog. And the next step, uh, I am a little bit of a perfectionist, so I wanted to create a bit of a roadmap before we started cutting wood. So I actually drew out what everything was going to look like on the wall. This isn't necessary, but before I started nailing in holes, I just wanted to be sure that everything was going to fall into place according to plan, and it definitely did. I started with the vertical boards first because there was less cutting involved, um, but I don't think it really matters which way you start. This was just the easiest way for us. The map was kind of hard to share with the lighting, but you can take a peek here what I did. So this is our road map. Uh, what the board and batten will look like, so I'll have one longer section and then two equal sections i messed up right there i measured to the wrong end of the plank but we've got a pretty good map of where everything is supposed to go now a quick note i did not remove the crown molding or the baseboard for my design i i had no intentions of removing the molding uh, i think you can do whatever works for your style best but i will say that had I had a, a better plan for the flooring, I probably would have removed the baseboard. I didn't intend on removing the baseboard before we did the floors. I was going to add quarter round, but then decided against it. So that just made a little bit of a problem for me later on, but you'll see what I mean in the next video. 
I laid out all of the vertical boards first and secured them and then the horizontal boards. Now our wall is really crooked as are lots of walls and homes. So we didn't pre-cut each horizontal board. We had to remeasure every single time and that kept us from having to waste a lot of the MDF board. Also, I did not use wood glue to secure the boards. I only used the nail gun. Um, I think for me, I changed my mind a lot and I didn't want to have to fight with taking them down if I decided to change the accent wall later. But I did fill in all of the gaps with uh, wood filler. And after I painted, I made sure to caulk everything. The caulking really makes a huge difference in what looks like maybe an amateur job versus someone who's probably done it before. And just in case you missed the first video, the paint color I'm using in our bedroom, as well as all the common areas in our home is a Benjamin Moore Edgecomb Gray. We picked up all the supplies that we needed on a Friday evening and got started early on a Saturday morning. And at this point, I want to say it was maybe around four in the afternoon. But as you can see, I'm, I'm wrapping up the project already. And everything from the boards to the caulk and wood glue cost us just around $70. So here's another quick look at the original concept. You can see we are updating the bed there with the tufted headboard, which happens to be on back order at the time that I am recording this voiceover. <laughs> and I also added some pendant lighting, which I'll talk about with you in the final tour. And here is the best picture that I could get for you um, after we had already installed the pendants and you can kind of see there that we had installed the flooring as well. So at that point, I just needed to go back and do some touch ups, but I thought you might want to see what it looked like in the evening too, as far as the paint color is concerned. All in all, I'm very pleased with how everything came out. Very sophisticated, very nice. So in the next video, we will show you how we installed our life proof flooring and tell you a couple tips to help you avoid some mistakes that we made along the way. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you walked away with some new knowledge or new ideas. Until next time, love and peace. At the millionaire.